Hello, and welcome to Independent Talent, the most action-packed indie wrestling podcast on the entire fucking planet. If you're pregnant, have high blood pressure, or experience dizziness, then you've been warned, because your ear holes are about to be crammed full of the number one local wrestling show in the Mid-South. Now, here's your host, hailing from parts unknown, Lemon Juice McGee. Welcome to episode 9 of Independent Talent, the newest and best professional wrestling podcast that covers all of the Mid-South fish areas. Uh, I'm your host, Lemon Juice McGee. With me tonight is the fighting man, Matt Pierce. I saw an alien today. And our resident wrestling historian, Hoagie Masters. I travel back and forth through time. He does. If you don't know what he's talking about, you haven't been watching the internet or our YouTube channel, um, or keeping track of us on Facebook, which uh, we, we can't blame you for if you're ever at work. Don't don't get on it at work. Uh, we'll talk about it later uh, at the end of the show. Tonight's episode, we're going to cover a few odds and ends. Uh, recently, had the chance to uh, photograph a primetime wrestling event in Nicholsville, Kentucky. Uh, the photos, the full album, available for free for you on the Independent Talent podcast facebook page feel free to share them like them whatever if you share them well credit back to us don't be a dick um also on that segment uh we will have a very special guest um for a very special show great show you got to see uh, larry d beating some asses always good uh, along with a few other guys that we've been watching lately we've talked about on the show uh, atm jordan cage a few others in fact you know what fuck it let's just get into that right now Making the towns. This is Making the Towns, the segment of the show where we talk about, well, wrestling events that we go to. Uh, however, tonight we're talking about primetime wrestling. It took place in Nicholasville, Kentucky on August 29th. I attended. However, Matt and Hoagie uh, no showed. Complete no showed. Hey, they didn't pay enough. Mmm. Is when I was, I'm not booked, I'm not going. I sat in my room and watched random wrestling VHSs. That's, uh, well, I mean, that's not, I guess that's a trade off. Uh, so, in the place of that, making up for Matt and Hoagie's non knowledge, we have the lover boy Brock Landers, one half of the Heartbreakers, and future opponent of John Morrison, this Friday night at New Origins Wrestling in Irvine, Kentucky, who happened to be on the sidelines watching a wrestling show. I was surprised as anyone, I think. Yeah, I uh, I broke the Dennis Stamp 101 rule. Mm -hmm. I went to a show I wasn't booked. But uh, then again, I got to eat at Red Robin, so (laughs) to to win-win. Yeah. Um, This was the first time at Primetime Wrestling. I hadn't been able to attend. They normally uh, wrestle out of Georgetown, but they move around a lot during the weekends. This Saturday was in Nicholasville, which, to my knowledge, is the first time somebody's had wrestling in Nicholasville in a in, while. In a while, I believe. In a while. So, uh, fairly good crowd. Uh, the gym was hot as fuck, but can't blame that on them. Usually it's the building owner when you rent the place. just not turning the shit on. Um, we had uh, Aaron Rose doing announcing, which is always good. Uh, we saw at uh, Pro Wrestling Revolution. We talked about before. He does all their live stuff on their show. Uh, the night kicked off with ATM... Uh, accompanied by Michael Cornette versus Max Sled. Um, first time seeing Michael Cornette, but he had a tennis racket. He did. I am assuming that he is related to or maybe adopted by Jim Cornette. Mm-hmm. Um, or he's just an avid tennis player and a Wimbledon hopeful. I, I don't know. Possibly so. Yeah. Um, he... Did make a difference every once in a while in the match. He made sure to get himself involved. Uh, Max Sled took the win, but uh, it was a good back and forth. ATM, who we've seen on quite a few shows we've attended lately. Um, I like what I've been seeing out of him. I know Matt likes him a lot. Yep, for sure. Uh, him. Every time I see him, he's just great in the ring. I love him. Yeah, and uh, he's good at getting the crowd to hate him. I think they just hate him because of the way he looks. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, ATM, uh, when that kid hits puberty, mm-hmm. uh, like I don't know when he turns 18. I mean, obviously, he's, you know, prepubescent. I'm going to say 12 or 13 I mean, years old. You would think a growth spurt's in the Yeah, cars. Yeah, I mean, once he really hits his prime and the other one drops, that kid's going to be a force to be reckoned with. Uh, Maxwell Sled, on the other hand, uh, I don't know if he holds public office in Nicholasville. I don't know if he brought his entire family with him. 
Uh, he was over, to say the least. Definitely had the uh, the crowd support, uh, which I think he was vying, trying to get back in the title picture there. And uh, I think this win got him a, uh, a cage match against Larry D the following evening, I believe. Yeah, yeah. They're probably some stuff going on. And uh, so, yeah, he won. Anyway, next up we had uh, Roger Ruffin and the Titan versus the Playboy Scott Hayes and Big Bad Chad, a Nicholsville local, and uh, much like Max Sled, everyone was behind Chad. <laughs> yes, Chad was definitely <laughs> bad. Uh, also, he was big. Uh, Playboy Scott Hayes was his partner, uh, you know, a, a veteran, uh, mm-hmm. one of the guys that works in central northern Kentucky quite a bit. Yeah, he, he, was, he was in the ring most of the match. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Scott, is a, Scott is a terrific wrestler. Um, Roger Ruffin uh, is a longtime veteran who actually was, if I believe so, was a referee in one of the big feds. Mm-hmm. Um, I know he has a lot to do, I believe, with the NWF and the uh, Bone Crushers Academy uh, out of Northern Kentucky. Uh, and Titan, that was my first time seeing Titan. Uh, very impressed. Uh, really liked his... Uh, his gladiator gimmick? Yeah, yeah. I like that. kind of reminds me of uh, Melvin Manhof, the uh, the Dutch kickbox- kickboxer. And uh, <clears throat> Big Bad Chad picked up the win for his team. Crowd loved it. Went on. It's pretty much uh, pretty much a straight-up tag match. You know, the heels healed it up, you know. And uh, the face came on top. Good all around. Uh, next up was, I, I think, one of the, I think one of the best matches of the night. Uh, Stan Sierra, the current PTW title holder, against uh, Chucky Smooth. I will have to say that I know Chuck, that you're not a big fan of, of Stan Sierra. No, generally. no. I, I'm a big fan of Chucky Smooth. I'm a big fan of his entrance music. Mm-hmm. I'm a big fan of fur coats. Uh, Stan Sierra, however. Um, if I had a gun with two bullets and was locked in a room with Hitler, Osama bin Laden, and Stan Sierra, I would shoot Stan Sierra twice. Um, I will say this, to be 65 years old, uh, he is in phenomenal shape. Uh, I, I just don't care for him. Uh, and, and of course, uh, he, had, he had to cheat uh, and got himself DQ'd so he could keep on to that belt. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, I will tell Stan Sierra the next time that I come to PTW, uh, I'm getting my rematch mm-hmm. because uh, Mr. Higgins was the only reason that, that I was defeated uh, at, at my lone shot at glory in PTW. So I will be back to avenge that loss. Gotcha. Yeah, it seems like uh, from the way it played out, Chucky Smooth and Stan Sierra, it seems like he's been coming after that title for a little while too. He's probably been screwed out on more than one occasion. Yeah. Um, Definitely a lot of hard hitting action. Um, saw a lot uh, less flashy moves, but a lot more impactful moves yeah, out of these yeah, two, two. Both those guys are big, big, yeah. big boys. Um, after that, we had picture perfect Jordan Cage, mm. uh, along with Michael Cornette once again, versus Jay Donaldson. Um, yeah, uh, Jordan Cage, who we've uh, seen on numerous occasions, uh, phenomenal wrestler. Um, always impressive. Always yeah, impressive. impressive. Came out, um, <clears throat> got on the mic. Well, my cornet got on the mic. There was a lot of, uh, you know, don't call me princess, whatnots going down. Um, which is great. I don't feel like he needs it, though. I feel like he's a good enough wrestler that doesn't need any of that, really. Um, Jay Donaldson, this is the first time seeing him. Um, and I wasn't sure how they would match up as far as things went, but it turned out to be pretty even match I guess um, Jordan Cage actually won but the referee reversed the decision because of Michael Cornett's involvement and they went back to it and um, and then Jordan Cage still won again <laughs> so I, wait, I thought I thought that Jay Donaldson won after the restart Possibly, I believe. I think so. May have. We may have been given false info. Yeah, I, I believe. Uh, I, I believe that whoever gave you your information definitely is healing out because I believe Jordan Cage Possibly got the so. got the pinfall after the restart. I want to say Jay Donaldson got the win. Uh, the match was very good. Uh, a lot of high flying stuff. A lot of back and forth. Uh, the highlight of the match for me was Jordan Cage debuting his new chest hair. Um, <laughs> 
I don't know if that is a landing strip. I don't know if you call that the Hitler. I'm not sure what that was. But uh, he, he probably wouldn't call it the Hitler. No, probably <laughs> no, not in this day and age. Um, but it, it, it definitely makes a good target for any man standing over Jordan Cage yeah. wanting to know where to aim their stuff at. Um, Jordan Cage also um, did a move that we're uh, fairly fond of that we've seen where he uh, – basically cram someone's face into a turnbuckle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it pains me to say that Jordan Cage is probably better than he thinks he is. Uh, he's really, really good in the ring. And uh, I really hope you're not recording this because I don't want him to play this back for me later because I just... Uh, this is all off the record. No, okay, we actually don't record all Great, great. Yeah. great. I didn't know how this worked. This not is this. really more of a pretend thing. Okay, right? yeah. Okay. Like, it's for Hoagie. Right. Yeah. It's for, yeah. for Hoagie. Great, great. <laughs> Uh, we're already to the main event. The thing here is that one thing I did like about the show is that it didn't run too long. Um, there was only one intermission. Uh, there were only five matches instead of six or seven or eight or nine at a lot of shows. So the crowd was able to be into it the whole time. You still felt like you saw a complete wrestling show. You know, I, I felt like the time on it was really well Yeah, done. yeah. Uh, the guys at PTW do a good job of, you know, getting the people in and out and giving them their money's worth. Uh, you know, a lot of shows you go to uh, are overbooked. Mm. They'll do the, the two intermissions. You'll be there for two and a half, three hours. PWR, <coughs> Scotty Ray, <coughs> uh, which that really kills your, your main event. But that wasn't the case at this show as, you know, the night was still young and the, the crowd was still fresh and, and hot and wanted to see the main event. Yeah, yeah. And the main event consisted of uh, legendary Larry D., A.K.A. the legend of Larry D. A.K.A. the king of Georgetown. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what his royal birthright is, but he is the king of Georgetown. Uh, well, I mean, who's to say he's not? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, he went up against, uh, I believe, a primetime wrestling debut of Sean the Virus Hard Drive. I think most uh, most times he just goes by Virus, I think. Yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe there was a virus in his hard drive. That evening, because he really had his hands full with uh, Larry D. Definitely outsized. Uh, yes, definitely outsized. Uh, I would say Larry had the experience uh, edge, and uh, I mean Larry was uh, he, he was on him from the from the giddy up. Yeah, uh, I actually figured he would have more. The virus had more of a an offense from the beginning, being you know the high flyer, but it didn't seem that way. Uh, eventually, in the match, though, guys came out of the back kind of to keep things. Almost like lumberjacks to kind of keep it, things in order. You had some people out there who were really more with Max Sled, I guess. And then you had Larry D's guys out there. Yeah, I, I really, I, I don't know why uh, they gave the virus the win. Uh, obviously, it was Max Sled and in his group that wanted to interfere in the match and cause all the the ruckus that transpired. Because anybody with Larry D is going to be just a straight shooter. They're going to follow the rules. You know, gonna... um, Stan Sierra was out there with Larry D. Okay. Maybe Larry D had a lapse of judgment in, <laughs> in, in siding with Stan Sierra. But, I mean, just most of those guys, uh, uh, Larry D and all those guys, those are... Those most are, of these uh, Russell Ryan Inc. guys. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. All those guys, they they play by the book. You know, they would never, they would never cheat. They would never interfere. Definitely had to be Maxwell Sled. Now, admittedly, I wasn't there, but I think Larry D maybe just updated his antivirus, and that's what got him. Okay, I no 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 no. no. Tried. He, he waited to stick that in there. Too. He, yeah, uh-huh. he's been waiting he this whole time. That's what you get for missing a wrestling show. Yeah. What is this like? A Ma- is that McAfee? Is that Norton? Like what? What, uh, what do you recommend, <laughs> Geek Squad? <laughs> Geek Squad. Uh, magnets. <laughs> how, do, how, how do they work? <laughs> Science. <laughs> Science, bitch. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, Sean, the virus hard drive, picked up the win by DQ. Uh, but that wasn't all, as this became just a battle in the ring. A brouhaha. Yes. If some, you will. Just uh, full on, uh, everybody in there trying to keep Larry D and Maxwell Sled apart. 
who, as we said, for the next night uh, were planned to fight in a cage match, which, uh, from what I've read, Maxwell Sled peeked out the win on that one. I'm sure he cheated his way to victory as well. I'm sure it was a pile of metal and brutality, uh, <laughs> unbeknownst to people in Georgetown, but till then. Um, but overall, my first impressions of the show was that it was really, I mean, just as good as anything else we've been seeing lately. Oh, yeah. Yeah, top, top-notch top wrestling, uh, you know, from the first match to the main event, uh, other than the Stan Sierra hiccup in, <laughs> in the middle, everything everything was great. Um, to be fair, I, I like I like Stan Sierra okay. as wrestling. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. I mean, I know this is, is a Brock Lander show here. Yeah. It's, but, uh, yeah. This is a... Uh, we should agree to, we should agree to disagree. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I've seen, I've seen him a few times. He's kind of impressive, I guess. No. No, no he's not. No. 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 I mean, he has he, he's, 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 he's beaten you, correct? No. You didn't get the, you got the PTW, PTW title I'm from I'm the PTW heavyweight champion. Oh. Is that okay. how it works? Yes. Oh. Yes. Stan Sierra. On his best day, Stan Sierra could not beat Brock Landers. Okay. Ever. The best part of Stan Sierra ran down the crack of his mama's ass. Okay? <laughs> uh, I'm mad. I'm madder than hell right now. <laughs> I know. I can tell. <laughs> I'm not, I can tell. He's going to flip this yeah, table I'm, uh, almost immediately. My nose is bleeding. My blood Jesus pressure is Christ. up. Uh, Are you going to be cleared to wrestle this Probably this not, night? no. Like, no. we did it. We ruined the entire, the whole the entire Morrison just match. Just is done gone. because we've uh, crippled him up here with anger. <sighs> Just rage. I'm going to talk to my therapist. Oh. <laughs> oh, Stan Sierra is a no good son of a bitch, and I don't <laughs> care if you tell him. I, you tell him I said that. You can play this back for him. I don't care. Give me a flash drive with this on it, and I'll take it well, to his house and I'll hand it to him. That doesn't get us a play. We need him to get on iTunes yeah, or yeah. Podomatic. Yeah. And listen. He bought a shirt. If Stan Sierra knows what Potomatic or iTunes, if Stan Sierra knows how to turn on a fucking laptop computer, <laughs> okay, the man is 79 years old, okay? <laughs> Jesus. Oh, okay. So. Stan Sierra <laughs> was the waiter at the Last Supper. That's how old Stan Sierra is, okay? The only sponsorship he's ever had is for Just For Men, Beard and Hair, and he doesn't even have any fucking hair. <laughs> when he's in school, it wasn't history, it was current events. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you said it, not me. Oh, primetime wrestling uh, can be seen usually on Sundays in Georgetown and uh, other areas, Paris, Nicholsville, what have you. Um, you can find it online, their schedule. Uh, great show. Larry D, Stan Sierra, who uh, Brock Landers hates, uh, ATM, Jordan Cage, Playboy Scott Hayes, got a number of guys, Maxwell Sled. Big uh, Bad Chad. Chad. Big, Big Bad, Bad Chad. Chad. Uh, so, pretty good locker room as far as like their current normal guys. Um, I think they have a few other guys who are normally on their shows in Georgetown that weren't on that particular show in Nicholsville. So, there you go. Deep roster, good wrestling. Uh, they'll get you in and out, and uh, it won't be like midnight. So... There you go. And I think most of the places they wrestle has air conditioning. So, have at it. You're a paper champ, Stan Sierra. God, that fucking gauntlet's been laid here. <laughs> Earlier we talked to Jumpin' Jeff Farmer. Let's check out the booking sheet. Let's go now to that interview. That's right. It is the booking sheet segment we've not done in a while, uh, but we're going to try to get back into that. Um, sometimes we ha- we don't aren't able to make shows. Um and sometimes you just need to know about shows that are coming up that we will be making. So this is the segment where we kind of do a somewhat of a calendar. Uh, we're going to start things off with a show that has already happened that we uh, sadly missed this last Saturday, September the 5th, in Columbus, Indiana. Uh, it was for Emerge Wrestling. You can find them at EmergeWrestling.com uh, for details on all their upcoming events. This was Emerge 8 Last Rites. We're just going to read off the results uh, because we didn't get to see it. Um the 8-Bit Punks, which is made up of King of the Arcade, Damian Cole, and Aaron Anarchy, defeated The Cure, Cole Radrick, and the Blue-Eyed Devil, Trip Cassidy. Next up, we have Poison Apollo Star defeated conniving Kenneth, and Kenneth James by disqualification. 
Yeah, it's... Well, these guys have nicknames. If your name's Apollo Star, mm-hmm. you don't need a nickname. Apollo Star's a badass name. Yeah. That's true, it is. Poison attached might not be a thing. However, um... Kenneth James isn't as intimidating, so having conniving, conniving. conniving. that yeah. does work. And, and, and the conniving makes me think that uh, he did something underhanded t- to lose by disqualification. That's, that's true. And maybe he has like a tag team partner. It's like scheming Stevie Celeste. Scheming. Scheming. Guy. Yeah. Scheming. Schemingberg. Schemingberg. <laughs> there we go. Come up with names here, people. Yeah. Uh, we got Ricky Ruckus defeated the Midwest monster Jacob Johns, who was with the Queen of Mean Nikki. I will believe be a valet or manager. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, she sounds uh, well mean. She sounds very good at being mean. She's and uh, like a royally mean. Yeah, is what you go with. Yeah. Uh, Ricky Ruckus won by submission. So, um, what kind of submission? If you were at Emerge, you would know. Uh, next up, Bad, B-A-D, uh, Yukon Mike and Chris Morris defeated the Young Dragons, Diamond Cut, Ace Perry, and Del Patricks to retain the Emerge Tag Team titles. I want to go ahead and uh, say Del Patricks has two first names. He probably isn't trustworthy because of that. Yeah. So it's probably, not a, good thing. It's probably a good thing he did not win. Young Dragons. we got Young Bucks. we got Young Dragons. we got Young Lions. Lots of Young Animal Kingdom related things. Well, I mean. Mythical yeah. Beasts. Just can't you, wait to you don't, up. you don't want to be the old dragons. That's true. That's true. Okay. Uh, next up, we got Warfare, Jeremy Hadley, with Christopher Icon, defeated the next level of entertainment, Owen Travers, accompanied by Dominique Fabiano. Fabiano. To retain the Emerge Outbreak title and to force Travers to leave Emerge Wrestling. So, um... Owen Travers is fucked. Well, he's taking yeah. next level entertainment elsewhere is what he's doing. Yeah. Next level right out of town. Yeah. Way to go, Travers. <laughs> Way to go, buddy. Uh, the Mastodon, J.D. Mariani, accompanied by the Queen of Mean Nikki, who is obviously a fairly decent manager. She has multiple in her stable. Uh, defeated Chris Caliber. That's a good name. Uh, uh, who was with Karma. A lot of alliteration. After interference from Jeremy Hadley and Christopher Icon. Hmm. So maybe Christopher. Ha- maybe Icon. maybe the Queen of Mean Nikki. Uh, maybe also represents Hadley and Icon, or maybe they awesome. just have something against Chris Caliber. I did see something online from a Karma that she uh, possibly got an injury uh, during the matchup uh, with from the stuff going on, but, but that she was you know ready to kick the shit out of people regardless. Could be that Jeremy Hadley and Christopher Icon hate alliteration. Maybe. Chris Caliber, that is a good fucking name, though. Yeah. Um, okay, uh, main event, which is, I- I'll tell you, this is a main event. Uh, the main attraction, that's a good name for the guy, I assume, since yep. he is in the main event. Yes. Which means if you mid-card it, man, it kills it. Yeah. Uh, main attraction, Donnie Idol, defeated one of the favorites here at the show. Yes. Uh, if you'll listen to Developmental Talent, our sister show, you'll know we love this guy uh, from Ring of Honor and TNA and myriad of other wrestling promotions. The Fallen Angel, Christopher Daniels. Uh, so, Donnie Idol, their champion, retained the Emerge title, uh, beating Christopher Daniels, which is no small feat in and of itself. Nice feather just kept there. It is. Christopher Daniels, always good to see. Uh, that's the thing with Emerge, that we, we've not made it up to uh, Columbus, Indiana to see their shows yet. However, uh, the cool thing about Emerge is they, they number these shows. It's like all of their shows are a special event. They're constantly yeah. booking good talent. I mean, there's always a, usually a big name attached to a show. So, like, even if you're even a passing fan of indie wrestling, you'll want to hit one of their shows for a chance to meet somebody that you might not normally get to see. Um, oh, plus, oh, awesome. we've met Christopher Daniels. He's a super fucking nice guy. He is a super fucking nice guy. Last Rites, Fallen Angel. It kind of makes sense. That is. It's cool. It's, <laughs> a, it's a good name. Uh, they, yeah. it's a, it could have been a pay-per-view. It's uh, fantastic. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, there's your results for Emerge 8. Last Rites took place Saturday, September 5th, 2015 in Columbus, Indiana. Hit up EmergeWrestling.com for future shows and info. And uh, their Facebook page is actually filled with some pretty cool videos. A podcast, not us, but another podcast uh, who covers a lot of the Indiana area of wrestling have shot some videos of entrances and stuff with some of their wrestlers. It's a good 
it's a good way to um, kind of discover some of their talent and see who you might like to see at their shows. So hit them up. Okay, uh, next up on the booking sheet, we're going to talk about an upcoming show this coming Friday, September 11th. Uh, normally you think of horrific, tragic things. But now there's an upswing as uh, New Origins Wrestling will be in Irvine, Kentucky at the uh, fairgrounds there. Main event of the night, the lover boy Brock Landers, who you just heard here running his mouth about Stan Sierra, going up against the current Johnny Mundo, former John Morrison, former Johnny Nitro. Former John Hennigan. Former John yeah. Hennigan. Kind of always John Hennigan. Yeah. Well, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he does a lot of flips, and he's awesome. And uh, he's going to be facing the lover boy Brock Landers. Uh, that will be probably the main event. Before that, though, almost as a co-main event for the new, now, championship, mm. there's a three-way casket match. So I'm, I'm very interested in seeing this. I don't think I've ever seen... A multiple person casket match. I don't know how it works. You got to put both guys in the Unless casket. Unless there's multiple caskets, that would be kind of cool. I don't know. I don't, I don't know how it'd work. Kind of creepy. St- stacking the guys would be tough. I would think getting the lid on. Yeah, because you have to have one, you have to have one guy out and long enough that he stays out completely yeah. until you can get him. Unless or, you go in there, that means you're out. Yeah. Well, maybe yeah. You put somebody in a casket, close the casket, like it's an elimination. Yeah, and then they're out. That makes sense. That like probably open up the cats and eating them. Like, that's gone. This isn't WWE. This no. Is, this is now. They're not going to go for those type of shitty gimmicks. That's what caskets do. They <laughs> close it and then they're gone. Is that what your parents told you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to Santa Claus? Um, some stipulations that a lot of people might not be aware of, because we're not sure entirely if they've been announced, but we're going to announce them here regardless. Um, the Heartbreakers have a way of, uh, which is Loverboy Brock Landers and the Voodoo Child Stevie Phillips, have a way of uh, using their teamwork in the most devious ways possible to get the W's. Well, in order to keep that from happening in the situation, uh, now management have declared that uh, the Loverboy Stevie Phillips cannot be at ringside during Brock Landers' match. Brock Landers cannot be at ringside during Stevie Phillips' match. Not sure who he's wrestling yet, but Loverboy will not be there. So they're going to be on their own, mono e mono, mono e lady. I don't know what they're going to set up for Stevie Phillips to do. Mono e mono is just how Brock Landers likes it, though. I, I think they both like it that way. Yeah. I, yeah. Man and man is exactly the way the heartbreakers uh, get into things. Yeah. Um, that's this Friday in Irvine. We will be there, probably shooting photos, probably selling some merch, which we'll talk about again at the end of the show. I gotta tell you, man, Brock Leonard is a friend of the show, but he wasn't Casey Jones. No, he was not Casey Jones. <laughs> and for those who don't know, John Morrison was Casey Jones in the awesome superhero beatdown where he fought um, and ass. killed kick ass. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Threw him into a subway car. Yep. Uh, yeah, Morrison, who we've seen on Lucha Underground. If you follow developmental talent, like we talked earlier, we, we've covered Lucha Underground. Uh, over, over time, we've covered the whole the whole first season. Uh, Johnny Mundo, a big part of that. Uh, Melina joined him at the end of the Lucha Underground yes. finale. Melina actually cut a promo you can find online right now on Liverboy Brock Leonard's page, probably on the Now page. Mm-hmm. Um, where she talks about title. John Morrison has cut a video promo. Brock Landers has cut a million promos that we happen to be a part of. He cut one with us back in 1991. Yes. Yes. Back in 91 for the Developmental Talent Radio Power Hour. Brock Landers, Hoagie Masters sitting right here. Yeah. His ass came from the future. We still don't know how he did it. We still have an ass because... It's a goddamn time machine. I we guess. got we got no time to learn that science. I don't know. <laughs> We're too busy with wrestling. Yeah. Okay, uh, that's Friday night, Saturday night, uh, local wrestling. So what you got? You got Cage Fury Eight in Shawville, Kentucky, at the old Shawville Gym. Uh, Cage Fury, the weekly uh, cage match. They also they'll have a Hall of Fame pre-show to that, where they're inducting a few people into their Hall of Fame. Uh, We're not going to say anything else about that show. Why? Because if you listen to Independent Talent Episode 8 on Podomatic and iTunes and our YouTube channel, you can hear an entire pre-show. So go do that. There's some jerk that took my spot while I was going. It was weird. 
Yeah. yeah, yeah. You smelled the same, but we're different people, apparently. You smell people? It, it's a it's a horrible power I have. Okay. It's, well. uh, I try to use it responsibly. You're a strange man. I know. I know. It's the alcohol. Oh. Um, on Saturday night, also, uh, if you, something happens, you can't make it to Shovel, different part of Kentucky, uh, WCCW will be in Lawrenceburg, as usual, bell time. Um, on that Sunday, you'll have primetime wrestling, which we just talked about in its entirety of the previous show. Fantastic show. Uh, can't talk enough about them. Hit up PTW in Georgetown. Uh, get on their Facebook page. Check it out. Um, you know, it's easy to find. They're there weekly. That's kind of a benefit with them and WCCW is there's going to be a show. Okay. Um, you know, in fact, wherever you are, Get on Facebook, for the love of God, and find your local wrestling promotions. Jesus, you expect us to keep track of every fucking one of them? It's too much. It's too much to handle. So get on Facebook, find local wrestling, uh, hit it up. I mean, if you're in Tennessee, you're getting all kinds of NWA Appalachia. You're getting all kinds of shit. So just hit them up, see how they go. It's only like 25 hours in a day. We We can't just spend all that time Yeah, just like doing your work for you. I mean... Well, actually, there's twenty. There's twenty four hours. What? Wait, what? There's, what? Yeah. I knew you were raised Amish, but I, they lied to you the whole time. It's twenty four hours. Damn you, Jenna <laughs> Dyer! Oh! Twenty four hours in a day. I mean, between the masturbating, uh, the sleeping, watching wrestling, and then the continuing of the masturbating, there's only so much time. Even I can even go to a show. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's really lemon yeah. juice is carries around like an IV drip of alcohol too. It's kind of uncomfortable. I can't even remember. Honestly, I couldn't even if we had it written down right now, I'd probably be able to read it, so it doesn't matter. Anyway, <laughs> that's it for the book sheet. And there's the roll up. And that is our show for this week. Uh, it's a short one, but hey, we figure this covers your driving to and from the liquor store or the whorehouse. Um, we're not judging you, we just we're just assuming that you're a piece of shit because you listen to this show. So, uh, before we go, um, we're going to talk real quick about some new developments that you might not be aware of. If you are not following Independent Talent Podcast on Facebook, you're a dumb ass. Uh, if you're not following the YouTube channel for Independent Talent Podcast, you are a double dumb ass because we are putting out video gold, son. Yes. Um, including... A new old commercial uh, that was found in the archives. Yeah, well, we found all these tapes of our old show back in the 90s we had. Mm-hmm. I mean, you guys thought this was a new thing, but no, we've been doing this since the 90s. Yeah. The, the, the radio power hour. We were in AM dolls. Fucking, it was great. Yeah. And, uh, we, we, can, we can only be heard in, uh, I believe, half of Winchester, like the southern half of Winchester, yeah. Kentucky, and... Uh, I believe Cave City, Cave City, and uh, I think there were two houses in Memphis. We were told could tune in because their antennas were big enough. Yeah, uh, it, uh, it, it, we good. really didn't hit our audience Mm-mm. at all. No, at no, all. no. Uh, we didn't have Hoagie then either. I mean, like time displaced Hoagie. Kept on showing up. It was weird. Yeah, yeah. Well, Hoagie was a little baby. But Hoagie is in this commercial. Yeah. yeah. Where we showed off some t-shirts. Well, these t-shirts have sold so fucking good over the years that we decided to bring them back out for you people. We got Ring Rat Wrangler. That's right. Ring Rat Wrangler. You know what a ring rat is? Why are you listening to this? Exactly. (laughs) We got... And these shirts are for developmental talent and independent talent. Mm-hmm. And they feature the Twitter handle for whatever podcast they're for on the right sleeve. So that way, you are like an undercover billboard. Yeah, you are. So, <laughs> we got Fuck Tony Schiavone. Yeah, because, I mean... Fuck Tony Schiavone. Yeah, fuck yeah. Tony Schiavone. <laughs> no, it does not say Fuck Terry Schiavo. No, it doesn't. We, we had somebody nothing actually to do with Terry think Schiavo. that. No. We, had no, we had nothing to do with Terry Schiavo. Um... Uh, Nothing against Terry Shavo. Terry Shavo was nice in the the nineties. I, I mean, now she just sits there. She's not very responsive to any of my sexual advances. Uh, I, she's cold shoulder, really. Um, so we just put fuck Tony Shavani yep. because fuck Tony Shavani. Mm-hmm. Um, we've got a resident wrestling historian shirt. Uh, 
Yes. If you're a fan of, of a Hoagie Masters on the show, we have a Matt Pierce steel steel chair magnet shirt uh, because well, if you haven't been listening to Velma Talent, then you're unaware of the fact that I have hit him with a steel chair on numerous occasions um, because that's what happens whenever you say things out of line about the Macho Man Randy Savage. It was yeah. funny. Yeah. Was it was it funny? I mean after I was finished. No. <laughs> okay. Um what other shirts have we got? Uh we have Who's a Strap On, personal favorite of mine. We do. Awesome we have a shirt that says Who's a Strap On because that's one of our segments on this show, Who's a Strap On, because who doesn't want to know who has the title belt? Yeah. Yep. Um, it's always good to know. Uh, people read go. it wrong, though. They're like, "Who's the strap on?" There's no apostrophe, and they they see they feel like we're asking who's got the strap on, like as in some type of dildo situation. Yeah. <laughs> like we're wanting to go sit on some. Like I don't know what they're thinking. You people are dirty minded. You are. It's disappointing. You are. It's disappointing. You are. Uh, we also have a shirt that says "Big in Japan and Ghana" because yeah. we are big in both of those places. Every radio in Ghana mm-hmm. is tuned to developmental talent and independent talent. There are three of them. There are three of them. I mean, you don't have to say three. Well, hey. I, Just add a couple zeros. I feel like that's more listeners in Ghana than people listening to this show have. That's true. Yeah. Unless, um, well, but, even the people in Ghana don't listen to independent talent. They listen to developmental talent. I mean, they might so they, they don't listen to this. They that's don't true. Get that's true. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry. Don't worry. Yeah. Savages, you don't, you don't listen to this. <laughs> we don't know. Just be glad they're listening to us. I mean, I love it. We are. That's why I made a yeah. shirt. And we'll ship that thing to Ghana. We don't give yeah, a Yeah, we will. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure it costs like five bucks, right? Uh, probably. Uh, we could probably just it. we could probably just drive it over there. To Ghana? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ghana's like, you might quest it, right? Yeah, I'm sure there's a interstate. I can probably use my time machine and get there somehow. I, I don't think that's how time works, Hoagie. For, for somebody who's such an astrophysicist, you, you're not aware of the I time and space. Where, 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 it's where, the time and space part. <laughs> the space part is the part you're missing. Yeah. Where did you get the plutonium for your time machine? Let's not talk about that on there. Well, I mean, we'll talk okay. about it later. Okay. I'm Ghana. Gonna, That's where Ghana. you got it. You got it Ghana. Ghana. As long as you're going to get it from the, uh, what, the Pakistanis, you're okay. Because yeah. Because they do not like it. It's the Lebanese. Lebanese. The Lebanese were the ones in the Well, the, well the Pakistanis don't like it either. They're... I don't think any. I'm pretty sure the U.S. would frown upon it as well. Yeah, I, I, I think if you take plutonium, yeah. someone's probably not happy. I mean, I, yeah, okay, it's Lebanese, but I'm sure he doesn't have a Delorean. Probably not. No, it's like it's like a like a Ford Escort or something, right? You're not gonna find a Delorean where he lives. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's actually an '88 Cadillac Deville. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, yeah, it's so pretty. It's a pretty good ride. <laughs> Anyways, uh, watch the commercials. Uh, we've also got some promo videos with uh, guest starring the Liverboy Brock Landers yep. uh, way back when he was a rookie. Yeah. Uh, He's well, aged fairly horribly, I think. Yeah, it's yeah. ridiculous, really. He, he looks yeah. way weaker now yeah. than he used to. Um, however, we are quite baby faced in the videos. That's, well, you, you're like smash faced. Well, <laughs> yeah. That's not changed He's at all. Weird, gold, like, weird ass gold monkey you keep on wearing. And said Steely Dan gave it to you. Or, I don't know. It was weird. Steely Dan did. I, for those who don't know, I'm a I'm a big proponent of Steely Dan and their uh, comeback tours over the years. Because uh, I was an OG fan. Yeah. Back in the day. So there you go. Uh, independent talent. Uh, thanks for listening. You, sh- you may or may not listen again. Uh, <laughs> I'm Lemon Juice McGee. With me tonight, uh, the fireman Matt Pierce. And how you Masters. There you go. Take it easy. This might be the end of the episode, but the beat goes on for independent talent online. Check out news, upcoming events, and massive photo galleries by liking the Independent Talent Podcast Facebook page. Also, feel free to hit us up with your opinions, suggestions, bitching, and moaning by sending emails to independenttalentpodcast at gmail.com. Oh, and for the love of wrestling, please support your local indie federations. Now get moving. We've got to get these chairs stacked and the trailer loaded.